For the past year and a half, I've been building the largest Titan in Warhammer 40k, Emperor class Imperator Titan. At Warhammer scale, where a human stands a little over an inch tall, this Titan stands seven feet tall, a colossal war machine of incredible power. In previous videos, I constructed the rough shape of the Titan's body, starting with two gigantic legs. Next, I built the skeleton out of PVC pipe, making a body and hips to support the structure. Using my epic scale Imperator Titan as a guide, I created a huge platform on the Titan's shoulders and then blocked in the cathedral-like structure on the back to get the first look at the seven-foot behemoth at its full stature. In this video, I'm going to tackle the toughest challenge yet, making a head that suits this incredible walking fortress. Let's get right into it. When I mocked up the Titan previously, I used a rough approximation of the head shape using a styrofoam ball and a bit of insulation foam. And my first instinct when building the head was to continue to use this as a base and build out the head on top of my placeholder. One of the cool things about the Imperator Titan from a lore perspective is that each Emperor class Titan is different. No standardized plan to build an Emperor Titan remains, so every Titan is an ancient relic that reflects the different styles of the Forge world that built it and also reflects the various modifications, transformations, and adaptations that these ancient machines have undergone during the thousands of years since their original manufacture. This gives me not only the freedom, but the obligation to make something unique. With that said, I wanted to maintain the classic look of the face from the old Epic model, with the lean, elongated skull-like features, so that will definitely be the jumping off point for my design. After messing around and gluing bits of foam to this original head, I realized it wasn't going in the direction that I wanted. First of all, all the Forge World Titans the Games Workshop makes have fully detailed bridge interiors. I'll be damned if I spend years making a giant Titan without it having the same level of interior detail. I realized I'd need the cranium of the head to be rigid and hollow. In addition, on the Epic Titan, the Titan's lower jaw is comprised of a bunch of complex curves. I wasn't sure how I was going to do that by cutting pieces of foam. So basically, I just scrapped the test head and started again. Now with the advent of 3D printing, a handful of digital artists have made their take on the Imperator Titan's head, with many of the files available for 3D printing. There was certainly some temptation to print one of these existing files, or at the bare minimum use some digital sculpting skills of my own to create and print some pieces that met my needs. But the more I thought about doing this, the more it felt like defeat. I've never been one to shy away from a scratch building challenge, and with this Titan's head being the center of focus on this giant, mostly scratch build project, I felt like it needed to be scratch built as well. So I turned to a technique that I haven't used since I was a little kid. And we'll get to that in a moment. But first I needed to make the shape of the head itself. I started by blocking out the layout of what would eventually be the interior of the bridge. In my research, one of my favorite books that features an Imperator Titan is the book Hell's Reach by Aaron Dembski Bowden. In that book, the protagonist, a space marine chaplain named Grimaldus, visits the bridge of the Imperator Titan Storm Herald to have a chat with the Titan Princeps who controls the giant war machine. She's old and withered and confined to a tank of fluid, but it clearly describes a bridge that's large and spacious, and large enough for a space marine and several tech adepts to walk around inside. This is one of my main reasons for building the Titan as large as I have. As I mentioned in previous videos, different sources list an Imperator Titan's height at between 40 meters and 140 meters tall. Now at scale, mine comes in at just over 100. But the important thing is that it gives me the space to have a head big enough for a proper interior for the head. I wanted to have a space for characters to come and go, something less like a cockpit and more like the bridge of a starship like the USS Enterprise. Now obviously it won't have that much space, but this floor layout became the footprint for a series of jigs that I made from chipboard that allowed me to cut the rough shape of the head in several layers with more precision than if I'd just been eyeballing it. With those pieces, I assemble the lower head shape, then glue them together with Gorilla Glue construction adhesive, sticking in some cocktail skewers for rigidity. I used sandpaper wrapped around a curved bit of foam to scour away even more foam, shaping the jaw with the smooth complex curves just the way that I wanted. I also made a rounded cranium piece for the top of the head, gradually using finer and finer sandpaper to achieve a smooth finish. Next, I wrapped the cranium piece in plastic cling wrap, securing everything to a piece of wood with some masking tape. Now this will provide some weight and stability to keep everything in place for the next step. Paper mache. 
This idea started because of a cool tutorial that I found about making prop masks. Now unlike the paper mache that I did as a kid that just used flour and water, I used this exterior wood glue, which is supposed to dry in a finish that's hard, waterproof, and sandable. The last time I made paper mache, it was commonplace to have newspapers in the house, but this time I had to go buy a newspaper specifically for this project, which I thought was kind of funny. I used a brush to brush the glue directly onto the squares of paper, then applied them to the form. I made sure to get each piece smooth, not leaving any air bubbles. On the curved front portion especially, I had to use very small pieces of paper, minimizing the chances of folds or bubbles. This step was quite time consuming, but also quite meditative and fun. After about 6 or 8 layers, I thought it was probably thick enough, so I applied a coat of pure glue, then left it to dry thoroughly. I did the same for the lower half of the face as well, and this part took even longer because of the convex shape of the mouth area. But I got energy from the fact that it seemed to be giving me the exact shape I wanted, something that I'd agonized over how to achieve for quite a while. When everything was totally dry, I used a really sharp knife to cut away the excess, allowing me to remove the mask-like piece, which was slightly flexible but still rigid enough to maintain its shape. I did however want some more durability and rigidity, but I didn't want to wait for more of the glue to dry. So instead I tried something new, using 3D printer resin which cures under ultraviolet light. I poured some resin into a cup, then brushed on a thin layer on a small area, using a UV lamp to cure the area I was working on, then moving on. I could see a hard clear layer forming, which was really cool. When I was done, I wiped off any uncured resin with a paper towel full of rubbing alcohol. I wet sanded it smooth a little bit, and then hit it with a coat of grey spray primer. Now the primer had two effects. Firstly, to protect the resin from curing any further in the ambient UV light it would be exposed to, and also to reveal just how lumpy my shape still was. With all the newspaper articles, it was really tough to tell, but it still wasn't smooth enough for me. So I sanded it down again, and then primed it again. I never felt like it needed to be perfectly smooth, since in my mind I'm building an ancient machine that would have seen lots of combat and wear and tear, but the second result was much better after I primed it again. I actually enjoy that it has kind of a dented, beaten look. I think it's going to give the machine the sort of venerable, aged look that I want it to have when it's finished. So I brought the head back inside, and at this point I started turning my mind towards the rest of the facial features. I knew I wanted to use a material that was quite durable, so I turned to an old favorite of mine, two-part epoxy sculpt putty. Now I'm not the greatest sculptor in the world, but I managed to cut the shapes I needed and apply them to the face. Later on, I'll sand and shape them to have sharp crisp edges. I wrapped the lower half of the face in masking tape, and started scratching the mouth grill directly onto it. This helps me visualize how the features will look in three dimensions and also provides a protective layer that allows me to make clean cuts when I cut in with an X-Acto. I cut out the mouth grill, opening up the window-like slits that will show inside to the mechanical workings of the head. Now that I have those openings cut, I used a hot wire foam cutter to carefully cut out the foam from behind the mouth grill, leaving an interior space. I traced the space onto some PVC board to give a durable cladding to the mouth. I used some epoxy sculpt to reinforce the teeth and add a durable bit of trim around the chin. This will ensure that the mask piece retains its shape and is nice and solid over time. Next I pulled out a bunch of old toys to raid for their mechanical bits to help me make some exposed machinery inside the mouth. I built a block to base the stuff on, and then glued some random bits from toy cars into what I thought was an interesting looking pattern, then added some floral wire for some final detail. I added a detailed crest to the head using some more pieces of PVC board, carefully carving them into the shape I wanted, and applying epoxy putty for durability. Next I added the cut down and modified barrels of two cheap dart guns to the side of its head to represent these mechanical sideburn type things it has. Now, it was looking pretty awesome, but it's still very light on detail for a Titan. The Forge World Titan kits are covered in rivet details and panel lines, and I knew I had to do that here as well. I started by blocking out where I wanted the rivets to be with a mechanical pencil. Then using a silicone press mold, I cast a ton of rivets using epoxy putty. With a panel lining tool, I carved some grooves into the smooth cranium, providing a nice bit of visual interest to the smooth parts of the skull. I then applied a bunch of rivets. Now I'm not sure about these particular rivets, it seems like they might be too far from the edge of the panel. I might have to go back and change that later, but I was really glad to get some on. Now once I started riveting, I couldn't stop. I added rivets all over the face, varying the size of the rivets depending on the thickness of the piece that they were on. It was at this moment that I realized I still needed some more detail, so I went back and added trim to the apertures in the mouth grill using some strips of medium chipboard. 
This added a much cleaner and more intentional look to the mouth holes. Now, in the Hell's Reach novel, Grimaldus remarks on looking out huge windows from the Titan's head, only to realize that they're the Titan's eyes. And I thought long and hard about if I should do that or not. But all my favorite images of the Imperator Titan has these sinister beady eyes, round and set in the sockets. So I cut a bit of plastic tubing to lay in for these eyes to get the positioning and the right look. And when I do the interior of the head, I'll have to make some decisions about what exactly is going on there mechanically and spatially, but for now, it's a stand-in that looks right from the exterior. I used more foam and skewers to build out the neck, and where the head will attach to the rest of the Titan. In my previous video, I showed the full height of the Titan, but at that time the Titan's torso was just roughly blocked in without anything glued in place so I would have the freedom to move things around as I developed it further. So in order to build the attachment point for the head, I had to finalize some things about the torso. I began by adding two curved details on the chest plate to make it look less flat and provide a nice recessed area for the neck to insert. In the belly area, the Epic model has a semi-domed structure with arch windows. I wanted to maintain this as I think it's one of the recognizable features. And as a practical matter, I made some large blocks of foam that rise through the center and the sides of the structure. I also blocked in several large pieces that define the inside of the Titan. When I do the torso, the back plate of the Titan will be removable, allowing you to view the interior which I intend to fill with busy servitors, menials, and tech adepts. Now I'm still finalizing the design, but I'm considering a heart-like glowing energy core in there as well. I'm probably going to leave the interior section somewhat modular, to exist in the experience of playing on the Titan when it's complete. One thing is for sure, I'll be magnetizing the inside to keep things from going flying if there's any jostling. Of course, there are no finer magnets I know of than the ones from the Magnet Baron, the sponsor of this video. I use Magnet Baron magnets to magnetize all my minis, magnetizing the bases for travel and the weapon options sometimes to allow easy changing of loadouts. The magnets are strong, high quality, and affordably priced. If you want to get some of your own, go to themagnetbaron.com. The site is designed to be intuitive to wargamers and miniature hobbyists in their specific use cases, which makes shopping for the right sizes and strengths easier than ever. Thanks Magnet Baron for sponsoring this video. So with the attachment point of the head completed, there's one step that I've been dying to do. Paint the head grey and see how it looked as a cohesive piece. So using some Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 primer, I primed all the parts of the head. I left the pieces separate so I could paint them more easily and eventually detail the inside in the future. And with that, I attached the head to see how it was looking. Well, here it is. I'm really, really happy with how this head is looking. Eventually, I'm going to add some cables and things coming from sort of the under the jaw area and connecting to the back there, but I need to resolve some other things before I can attach those. And if you're wondering why I haven't shown you the whole Titan, like the cathedral bit up above or the legs and hips, it's because I've been hard at work making improvements to those areas as well, and another episode will update you on those soon. So make sure you're subscribed. If you like this video, let me know what you think down in the comments. In addition, if you join my Patreon, you can get your name engraved on this Titan in the finished version or on one of the banners. I'll put a link to the Patreon page below. As usual, a massive thank you to my current Patreons and to the sponsor of this video, The Magnet Baron. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.